Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Behind the Crosshairs. I am Gandhi. You guys know the show by now. It's a video series, uh, video interview series, and uh, tonight, uh, hopefully, the rest of my guest show. But right now, we have Clutch. Clutch, welcome. What's up? Yeah, I see the hundred grand check there, and look at you. The two thousand nine, <laughs> right? Yeah, two thousand nine. Nice. Uh, so, Clutch, could yeah, you? Uh, Tell us, you know, start off the basics here. Your full name, where you live, school, you know, all that stuff. Full name, uh, I go by Wes, uh, Royce Price. I uh, live in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I attend the University of Memphis right now. I'm a junior, uh, majoring in marketing, and I'm a badass at Halo, so. <laughs> marketing? <laughs> Say what? You're really going for marketing. Yeah, buddy. Nice, nice. I like that. I like that. So... Uh, Clutch, uh, before we get into the whole gaming world, which I know you're going to fucking spew for hours about, uh, outside of the gaming world, uh, what is it that you do? Um. Minus school. So, school and gaming out. I don't want to say I'm an alcoholic, but, uh, I like to go out a lot, uh, with my buddies, uh, kick ass at pool. Really? That's I, my I thing. I'm so bad at pool. Can't do it. <laughs> I, I can't, like, line it up, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I see people with that problem. I got a lot of friends that suck, so it's it's kind of confidence building, uh, dominating them all the time. But uh, I grew up with a pool table in my house, so uh, I'm pretty good at it. Nice, nice, nice. So now, clutch. How did you get into the MLG scene? Um, like step one. Like what happened? What what triggered the spark? Way back in the day, uh, I was a freshman in high school. Uh, my buddy on the basketball team had uh, Xbox Live. I didn't even have an Xbox at the time. And uh, I went over to his house and played a few games, uh, Halo 2, like big team battle. And it was so much fun, so I was like, all right, I'm going to get this. And then I ended up just like becoming mad at they did the big team battle. <laughs> like All I did was play big team for like the first two and a half years of, like, my Halo career, and then, like, I became, like, the best at Big Team, like, I was that guy, I was, the, like, I had multiple 50s accounts, like, <laughs> like, I was a straight nerd, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I started playing a little bit of hardcore, um, uh, I got bored at Big Team because it was just, like, too easy at the time, I mean, there weren't too many good people playing it, and, like, hardcore is, like, real competition, uh, I watched a few, uh, MLG events, like, online, and then I ended up going to an event in uh, Dallas 06, and uh, that was my first tournament. I got, like, last round of AM, and I had no idea who anyone was but Ogre 2 and Ogre 1, so. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, like, I, like, learned, I learned who people were, but, like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I went to my first event. Like, I did not expect it to be as big as it was. Huh. So then, from Halo 2, Halo 3 launched, and you were just like, this is my game? <laughs> what was it? The 360 controller? Because that's what killed me. That crippled me. At the uh, at the end of Halo 2, I like I was starting to get really good at hardcore. I was like a 45 or something. And then uh, like I started getting in pros parties. Like like top 16, top 24 players would uh, invite me. Like Primo, he was a big help to me. Uh, B Rizzle. Uh, these guys would like invite me to play hardcore with them because I mean like I was just an, an online god, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I would still get, like, whooped by, like, Cloud and Hysteria and, like, you. But, um, you know, I, pro I progressively was getting better the more I played hardcore. And then when Halo 3 came out, I continued to play with the same people, and they kept getting me in good parties. And every time I got in a good party, I would try my art out. Every time. Like, it was like, you gotta, like, tighten the belt one more loop, and then you, like, you go all out. Like, it's a tournament nowadays. And, uh, eventually... I got really good, and White King and B-Rizzle made a game battles team and uh, put me on it. And since then, I've just been progressively getting better, I guess. God, I haven't heard those names in so long. Jeez. Like Big shout out to them. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Dude, it's good to see, like, the passion that you're carrying right there. Like, you, you I just spoke about how you got started, and you got this fucking <laughs> big smirk on. That's awesome. Uh, let's talk about Halo Reach. Uh, this season... You had, like, you started off, you got third, and then you, like, came back down, and then, like, the roller coaster, like, ended up high. So, uh, what what happened this season for you, man? Um, you know, I started out, as soon as Halo Championships, Halo 3 Championships was over, uh, I dedicated my life to Reach, basically. Um, I went hard. I wanted to be the best, and, you know, come first tournament, like, 
BTH, man, we were a good team. Um, we did not lose one series on the line. We lost, like, one series to Instinct 6-5 at the LAN, or maybe it was FB. And then, like, come tournament time, we ended up getting third. And, I mean, we didn't. We definitely underperformed, and, I mean, we got third. We def- I feel like we should have won that. But uh, from there, um, we kind of changed rosters because of we wanted to, I guess, attitudes got in the way, um, people's egos. And we ended up dropping APG, and that's probably one of the biggest mistakes in my career. I mean, I love that kid. I uh, love teaming with him. Um, I mean, Neighbor's a good guy, definitely a good player, but didn't fit us at all. And, I mean, I, I could feel the difference from, uh, like, the first couple games of practice. And, I, like, it wasn't going to be the same. We didn't have that same, like, aggressive, like, in-your-face BTH style that we were used to. So we kind of had a rough tournament there, and then, you know, I'd, didn't really get a team offer after the second event, and I ended up almost quitting and ended up getting on, like, VS, where I teamed with uh, Reliable, Swiftco, and Calm. I mean, they were, we, were all, we were pretty good, but we ran into uh, BTH or, or FB for top eight, and that was a tough match. So, um, I mean, one thing I'd like to say about that team is if you don't know much about Reliable, that kid is insane at this game. Definitely one of my favorite teammates ever. He's hilarious, and his individual skill is out of control. Big shout-out to Swift Kill, too. He deserves a better team. Yeah, I, I always give him a hard time on the show, but it's <laughs> whatever. I just, I just notice things. Um, so y- you join Fire, and it's you, Best Man, Arcanum, and Royal 2. And, we, and you guys were good, but you underperformed. We were damn good. You, we, you, just, we had a serious problem come event time because somebody... Um, He's the man of hard knocks. <laughs> Somebody went to jail. Uh, to... You... <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll leave it at that. But so, um, after the tournament, uh, I, I everyone assumed that you know you guys were going to break up. Uh, did you know going into it, you were like, I am grabbing onto Royal Two and I'm not letting go. Absolutely, man. That kid is insane. He doesn't miss like ever. That kid is <laughs> the best player in the game. You it's think insane. So? Yeah. Dude, his positioning is, like, I, I yell at him probably 60% of the time we play, but, you know, uh, I, I feel like I'm getting him a lot better every day. Uh, his positioning could be better, but his shot couldn't be any better. I couldn't ask any more of the kid. Uh, he's a playmaker. He never lets you down. Uh, he's going to be one of the biggest names for a long time if he continues to keep it up. Yeah, he's 15, right? He's 15. Now, does that, like, conflict with, like, uh, scrimming? Or is his parents kind of lenient about it since he just, you know, took second at a national championship? Actually, two of our teammates have uh, bedtimes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of does conflict with our schedule. You know, we got to uh, we gotta be off by, I'd say, 11 Central Time, so, like, midnight Eastern. Which, I mean, isn't bad because, I mean, you don't really get productive practice after that anyways because everyone's tired. So, um, it's not bad. We just need to, we always have to make sure that uh, everyone knows when everyone's getting on and everyone gets on at that time. Gotcha. Now, so- Nationals is done. And you guys had one hell of a run. First off... What the hell happened in Active Rush series? I, 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 I sat there, I, I got the script, and they're like, okay, these matches are coming up. And I was like, well, <laughs> Warriors Active Rush, Warriors are just going to 3 0 them, so that can go on the featured station. And then something catastrophic happened. Aries nope. getting the best of clutch. <laughs> Aries, Aries getting not- the best of clutch? He was not missing, all right? Like, that wasn't even fair. First of all, if they had played like that the whole tournament, they would have won. They're better than Instinct. <laughs> but uh, seriously, I guess, um, you know, it's strange. We, I feel like we play up to our competition. Uh, I know for sure I do. Yeah, 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 um, that's, the, that's like the one thing you're known for minus shit talking. <laughs> um, it's not like we didn't take them serious. Like, I knew they were going to be good because they had just gotten top eight. But, like, I definitely didn't expect that out of them. And... We came out cold, and they came out on fire. Like, that was probably the best Halo those kids have played at a tournament. <laughs> and, I mean, like, my hat's off to them for uh, playing like they did. I mean, they came to play at Nationals, which is what you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. 
And then you decided to uh, <laughs> close out the night by beating Infamous. That was a great feeling. Yeah, um, uh, 25 minute uh, pit CTF game. Oh, what, it was. What the hell? Like, how do we miss this stuff? Like, <laughs> the biggest problem was the, we played a nine minute pit flag before that, and it was the best game of the tournament for me, and we had the wrong flag settings on, so they had to end it. I'm sitting there like plus 10, nine minutes in, just dominating with Snipe, and then they're like, end it, end it, end it. And then we like, restart the game. We win again. We win this time, but I go like neg 10. I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> like, of course, the best game of the, like, my tournament gets deleted. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's what happens. <laughs> you don't deserve the spotlight. Royal 2 and Snakebite only. <laughs> so you, you beat Infamous, and then you wake up, and you're like, you know what? Let's put on the big boy pants. You know, this is Championship Sunday. Let's take home, you know, at least top two. <laughs> and you just go against everyone. Like, uh, what, what did it go? Status quo, dynasty, classic, classic, BTH, BTH and then instinct. Well, right. Minus instinct. Uh, what was your f- uh, hardest matchup? I mean, you pretty much handed everyone their own ass. But like, you know, like if you had to pick one that was like kind of making you sweat, which one was it? Um. You know, I'd say the hardest match was BTH. Um. They were definitely playing great last tournament, all of them. Uh, hats off to them. I love those guys. Uh, glad they could get at least third. Um, the best feeling it was to win was against Dynasty. Why is that? I talked to Dursky before, and he goes, I was like, if there's just one team you can beat and you lose the national championship, who would it be? And he goes, Dynasty. Yeah. Why? Like, I, I showed up to that tournament to beat Dynasty. I didn't, like, they had talked so much trash to me online before, uh, the tournament, like, uh, Formal was talking, like, running his mouth. He thinks he's, like, he was, like, thinking he's a big shot and stuff. He was, like, I would never lose the clutch even though he lost to me at the first tournament. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, where his logic comes from with that. But, uh, I was, like, all right, all right. So, but on Friday of the tournament, I, like, I was talking to Cloud before I two's match, and he was, like, what do you think of Dynasty? I was, like, uh, if we play them, I'm guaranteeing a win. And Cloud, of course little rat himself, uh, he goes over to uh, Hines and Formal and tells him that. And then we end up getting 3-0 by Active Rush. And they come up to me later that day, and they're like, I thought you guaranteed a win versus us. You can't even get past Active Rush. So, oh, burn! So I knew as soon as I saw Dynasty on our bracket, I was like, let's let's go, baby. And then we end up 3 0 him, and I stood up, and I was like, I guaranteed it. So it felt, it felt good to um, shut those kids up. Now, um, from the the casting booth I was in, uh, th- it seemed like you guys were just satisfied with second. Like, I mean, instinct. I will not take anything away. They were fucking raping, uh, to say the very least. And raping is an accepted grammar here in the gaming world. So if you're yeah. raping and accept it, um, yeah. they were shooting incredible. But there was just times where you were trying to fire them up. Like uh, in the King of the Hill uh, Nexus, you said, "Play like you want to fucking win." And you're trying to get a fire, but it was just like you guys have just went through so much hell. Yeah, I mean, we're like look at how young the players on our team are. I mean, we're like we're a young team besides me. Um, goddamn Gramps over here. Yeah. But uh, but uh, I mean, we were definitely fatigued at that point. We went to like three game fives that day. Uh, played against every team, like you said. I mean, fatigue was definitely a factor. Uh, I was definitely not satisfied with second, so I don't ever want to hear that again. But uh, it, oh, was, it was tu- it was it was it was tough to uh, it was tough to lose like that. I mean, like I definitely at least wanted to put up a fight, and it, it was kind of embarrassing the way we lost. Uh, no doubt about it. But I mean, if anything, that just gives us more drive to uh, to uh, come back and have a better showing. Absolutely. Now. Uh, looking forward here, uh, we got a couple more minutes to spare, so uh, looking forward here, uh, you got new settings coming out and everything, uh, wh- what, are you just playing No Bloom consistently right now? I've played like three days in the past like two weeks or since whenever the tournament was, and uh, I've definitely only touched No Bloom, obviously that's going to be the decision yeah. I feel like. Um, it's alright, I feel like you die way too fast. You need to be able to get away. You need to be able to, like, not have to challenge every fight. And I feel like they need to make it at least, like, a a six-shot DMR for that to work. If they're going to take sprint out, it has to be a six-shot. And if 
they keep sprinting, and I'm thinking it has to be a five shot. Um, I don't. I'm not really like too fond about how the the new damage uh, is applied. You know how like you you're not your shields aren't popped and you still die to one shot. Yeah. It's kind of uh, I'm not used to it, so I can't really give a good judgment on it. But like I don't want to complain about it too much just because I haven't played too much of it. But um, I'd rather use the old shields and no bloom if that's even possible. I don't think it is, but it's whatever. Gotcha. All right, well, Clutch, uh, off-season plans. Wait, you got any? You doing anything cool this off-season? Um, Going out, strip clubs, beer, <laughs> fucking blowing your 15 grand? Uh, I think I'm going to save my money this time. Yeah. That, that's... <laughs> that, that 25 grand kind of depleted pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, you know, hang out. Uh, stay on my grind. I'm making sure my teammates do too. Uh, the off season is what makes or breaks the entire next season for teams, and nobody realizes that, but just a few of us. Uh, I mean, if you look at me after every off season, I place at least like top three in the past like three years at the first event, besides one. So, yeah. I mean, it's really important to uh, get that advantage to game a lot more than other people. But other than that, just hanging out. Uh, relaxing. I'll probably go up to uh, Durst's house. I think we're all going to go up there and uh, have a little uh, team bonding moment, you know. Aww. <laughs> That's cute. Alright, man, well, uh, interview's good. Um, uh, you have any shout-outs, sponsor plugs, uh, potential sponsors you want? Uh, now's uh, your time. Give a big shout-out to uh, God, you know. Mm. Without, without him, nothing would have been possible so far in my life, and uh, big shout-out to him. <laughs> Uh, my team, obviously. Uh, my coach, Azo, love the dude. Uh, family, friends. Uh, big shout-out to uh, Assault. Uh, he retired two days ago, and, you know, he was a big part of my uh, big part of my career. Uh, I used to game with that kid every day, and we all, we had the same drive, same mentality on winning and stuff, so it's, it sucks to see him go. It reminds me of me. Um, I'm going to dread that day. So I can't really imagine what he's going through. Big shout out to him. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. I'll keep in touch with you. Yeah, for sure. All right, take it easy, man. Thanks for having me. And that is Clutch, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, he's he's a hell of a dude. He is he is just really really good guy. Uh, coming up next on the show, as soon as I make this uh, phone call, this is uh, his name is Tanner Etheridge. His name is Rain. He is a uh, professional Gears of War 3 player. Technically, there's no professional, but he's very well known. So as we make the call, I will give you a little bit of a background. He, uh, he's, he attended uh, Hype Festation, uh, the very first one, uh, on the Fathering, which is uh, Caesar, a.k.a. CDN the Third's team. He did very, very well. He's known for a shotgun, just huge, huge plays, and uh, he's just an all-around good dude. Hi! What's up, Scott? Hey! Am I in your frat house? No, I'm in my apartment. Oh, uh, okay. All right, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Rain. Rain, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just chilling in my apartment. All right, now, Rain. Uh, this oh, I'm looking at the stream. It's bugging me out. All right, I'm all doing right, that. Yeah. Don't check yourself out, all right? Don't <laughs> you do that. Um, so, Rain, a uh, little bit of your background, where you're from, where you go to school, you know, the whole cliche getting to know someone. All right, I'm from uh, Evansville, Indiana. I graduated from high school in 2010. I now go to Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, and I'm a member of Acacia Fraternity. We have a good fraternity house up here. And, uh, I mean, that's about it. I play Gears of War, Gears of War 3, baby. Uh, yeah. Nice. All so, right, uh, so, uh, Rain, how did you get involved in the competitive gaming scene? Um, I started playing game battles right when Gears 1 came out, like the day it came out in 2006, in November, and eventually, I mean, game battles just transitioned into MLG, like I remember people had like MLG 07 in their bio before, like right when the game came out, I was like, oh shit, what's MLG? Then got into game battles, found out what MLG was, and then I attended my first event at Chicago 2007 and got 10th. Nice, and you never really looked back since. Yeah, not really. Besides Gears of War 2. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Gears 2 hater. I really? played the game when I was on the circuit. I mean, 
it wasn't really that bad of a game. I mean, it definitely had its flaws. It wasn't as good as Gears 1, but it's still a good game. Nice. Now, how are you liking Gears 3? Gears 3 is a blast. It's fast. It's Whoa. exciting. We have more game types. We have you. So, I mean, just bigger, <laughs> better, and more fun. Like, Hyda Station was sick. I hope yeah, everybody yeah. watched that. Now, now uh, you got to mute your stream. I got to back up. Super, Super back, back up. Really? Oh, yeah. No, good now. Because huh? okay. I don't even have volume on my thing right now. So. Fascinating. Doesn't matter. No, we're oh, good. Never mind. Right. <laughs> um, now I forgot my next question. Okay, rain. Rain, rain. Uh, you were on the fathering, and now, I, did I see VVV in front of your name, or was I hallucinating? Uh, not anymore. What? What happened? Uh... I was really liking that team. We kind of rushed into it and like mm-hmm. scrimming, and just like once we like scrimmed for a couple of days and everything, it's just it wasn't really. I wasn't. I wanted to fit on that team. Like, uh, um, I don't know. It just wasn't me. Like, I like all those guys. They're great players. They're going to be a great team. But it just wasn't a good fit. I kind of rushed that. So, gotcha. And then the fathering, I was just kind of filling in for Monster, and then um, I don't know. Like that team, just uh, they. Just the hours were different and everything. And I had to get a job with job soon, so I mean that didn't really work out. Now I'm uh, dude, just sell blood chill. and semen. Yeah, it'll be all right. Um, yeah, I should play dodgeball. Yeah, <laughs> you got the reference. I like that. Um, so now uh, looking forward, do you have any eyes on any individual players? Um, I've been scrimming with Awakening. Um, I don't know really what they're doing. I was actually just in a scrim with them. Um, and I mean, I'm just been scrimming with them, and I see Phantom Strike saying fathering 50 frags as you are awakening in one month. Well, 50 frags, your teammate right now, Drix, decided to leave that team, so that wasn't on me. Well, it's what not, is with some, this uh, Fatal Strike in you? Is there like a like a clash between you two? No, not really. I was just kind of busting his balls for using the ret name the other day, okay. the retaliation, because okay, well, well, okay, that's cool. So, I mean. No, nah, there's there's no bad blood. I don't really have bad blood with anyone. No one has bad blood in the Gears of War community. Everyone just no, loves no. E L E. Everybody, everybody love everybody. That's what I'm talking about. Um. So now back to what we were discussing before I got completely sidetracked. Uh. So who are you looking to team with? Uh. You you said you did Awakening. Yeah, I just, I, just, I ran like two scrims with them. Um. I'm. I mean, it's pretty much up to them. I've just been scrimming with them. Uh. So, I mean, I don't really have any plans right now. So, gotcha. just playing the game. Are you attending Hype V2? Yeah, I'll be there. Nice. And you will, have a, you will be competing there, correct? Yeah, I'll be competing. Nice, nice. Now, uh, in the Gears of War uh, competitive scene, there's a lot of you know inner turmoil about what game types to be used, what shouldn't be used, what maps. Uh, yeah. what, are, what are your opinions uh, on those? Um... I think King of the Hill and TDM have a lot of potential, and they should be used competitively. But, I mean, they could definitely use some tweaks. Like, King of the Hill has some spawn issues where people spawn, like, right on top of where the spawn is. And uh, TDM can get really slow, and there's some spawn trapping issues on some maps. But they work, like, sometimes. Like, King of the Hill Dry Dock works pretty well. King of the Hill TDM um, Trenches looks works pretty well. Um, Thrash is eh. Uh, TDM Old Town kind of works. TDM Trenches could work better. I think they should move the digger down low in the tunnel. I mean, the game types can be competitive. I know a lot of people complain, like, oh, no, we shouldn't play these. But, I mean, it's what Epic wants. It's what MLG wants. So, I mean, it's not about us. I think that's what everybody needs to realize is that, hold on, my food is here. I'm really sorry. I ordered food. I'll be right back. That is the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. Well, there's his food. Um... So basically, in the Gears of War community, what's going on is, uh, in the past, Gears of War has only been execution only, and the other yeah. game types didn't really work. So now, uh, since there's maps are better, the weapons are stronger, there's new weapons and everything, uh, we're really just trying to figure out if we can get King of the Hell in there and TDF. Yeah, I mean, I think we can. Um... The game types are kind of rocky because everybody's like, oh, no, this isn't execution. We played it for four years or five years now. It's like, so it's kind of a new thing. Everybody hating on it. But, I mean, the game types have potential, and people need to realize they're going to be used. So complaining is not what you're going to do. If you want the game types to get better, post constructive videos, anything. Hit up 
um, at Pete Nub on Twitter, at Quindel Hoyo. Let them know what can make the game type better, like with spawns and everything. Because the game types are all right right now. And they can be used competitively, but there's still that random factor in there that doesn't really, um, it doesn't really affect execution. So, I mean, if you want the game types to be better, they're going to be used. Like, Kill KC has had, said that. Sundance has said that. Quindel Hoyo has said that. So they're going to be used. If you want them to be better... Give some input, but give give it constructive. They don't be like these game types suck. Why are we doing this? I don't want to travel to play these game types. If you don't want to travel to play these game types, don't travel. But if you want to play Gears of War competitively, give some constructive criticism or help out the developers if you want the game types to get better, like regarding spawns or hill timers, or like if you want like it to be like Halo, where players have to stand in the hill to get points. Like let them know, like because complaining does nothing. Like we complain during Gears Two and Gears One. And what happened? We got kicked off the circuit for two years. So, I mean, complaining doesn't do much. Constructive criticism helps out the community. Now, so, how do you, if you were to, like, uh, basically instruct the community on how to do it, uh, how would you say? Like, upload YouTube videos? Like, yeah, I mean, does, if you have or? a problem with a game mechanic or a game type mechanic, make videos of it. Because, if you, like, if you talk about it, I mean, you, Twitter or whatever, they'll notice that. But if there's a video where you have concrete proof that's irrefutable like you can't go against that so if you have a video against something like that proves it or like you show that there's truly a game type mechanic like i know a lot of people complain about the top spawns in king of the hill on trenches and thrash ball where like they've killed three people all four teammates with either pushing the hill there's one guy there and then like three teammates spawn there with spawn show and kill you when you should have had the advantage to take the hill like if you have video evidence of that they will take that into consideration but, like, if you talk about it on Twitter or a post, like, oh, it sucks because of this, that doesn't really help. So if you have something, make, get an example of it. Like no, like, no matter how long it takes, record your gameplay, keep it archived. If you have something that's, like, an obvious problem, have a video of it, tweet it at Pete post on the Epic forums on Gout Nation, and we'll get it out there if it's a true problem. So, I mean, just make content. It helps everyone. Nice. Well, that was very informative. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, you've been thinking about that a lot recently. You've been wanting to say that, haven't you? It sounded rehearsed. I mean, kinda. I don't know. It's it's easier to say it than it is to type it. I don't like. I don't know. It's the backwards hat. That's what it is. <laughs> it's the backwards hat. <laughs> All right. Well, Rain. Um, do you have any shout outs? Uh, anything like that? Anything you want to address? I mean. Shout-outs to the Gears of War community, to yourself for doing all the work you're doing with the execution of the night. Shout-out to the guys behind Hypha Station, CDN, Burger Fresh, Vicious, um, Murray, Captain Barbosa, yourself, DeFace, just everybody that's helping out and doing things for the Gears of War community. These Hypha Station things are, are fucking amazing. The big tournaments, like a lot of... No, not shout-out to the IU football team. I saw that in the chat, sorry. But just shout-out to everybody that's doing work for the Gears community because it's fucking sick the work that everybody's doing, and they're not getting much out of it. The guys behind hype that are putting on hype station, the only thing they're getting out of it is that they get to play Gears of War and be with their other Gears of War like family. I mean, they put a lot of money in that, what people don't realize. This isn't for themselves, it's for everybody. We want people to play Gears of War. We want Gears of War to be big. We want other games to be big. We just want like eSports or competitive gaming to thrive. So, I mean, just shout-outs to everybody. But mainly Gears. It's hard. <laughs> but mainly I, Gears. You can say. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you for coming on the show, buddy. Um, keep me up to date. Uh, when, when, if you had to put an ETA on when you will have a team, what would it be? Uh, a week, a couple days, an hour. I have no idea. Yeah, but, uh, you're just a spontaneous kind of guy. Yeah, I guess. Um, I'm just trying to find that Gears family. I mean, everybody's like, oh, he team hops and everything. But if you don't realize, I was on retaliation for like nine months straight before other people chose to leave the team. I was on Infinity for like five months straight before everybody decided to go separate ways. So, I mean, if I get a team that's a family and fun, I'll stick with that team. But, I mean, I, I guess I'm picky or I rush into decisions. I mean, I guess I rush into decisions. But I'm trying to find that one team that's a family. So, I mean, hopefully I'll be doing big things next year. I'm definitely planning on it. Nice, man. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the show, buddy. Thank you for having me, I bud. will see you at Hype 2. Yes, sir. I'll see you then. All right. Later, bud. Later. Tanner Rain. Hell of a guy. Really, really awesome dude. He's, uh, he's, he's always down for the calls. And that is, uh, I, I don't even know who these people are. But um, I don't have a chat either, so uh, uh, my chat refuses to load, just at, like not, never wants to work. Uh, coming on the show next is going to be uh, Guy Blaze. 
Uh, some of you do know him. Uh, the majority of you should, because uh, Blaze is a very widely known figure in uh, the competitive Gears of War scene. He does commentaries, he does montages, everything you can pretty much ask for. And there he is. Hello, Blaze. Hello. How are you? I'm doing all right, man. What's poppin'? Eh, another day, another day. You know, hanging out, casting, you know? How are you doing? Shit, I'm doing good. Yeah, I'm actually in a party with my uh, with my team trying to find a scrim. Okay, well, if anyone's out there, after Blaze is done with the interview, uh, scrim him. Uh, now, Blaze, if you could give us, you know, your little background, where you're from, uh, you know, what do you do, all that stuff. Is my video working right uh, now? It was until you just did that. Okay, so let's do this. Yes. Now, what about now? There it is. Boom. I'm back. Okay, you are I just back. I can't see myself. There we go. Oh, well. Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Gabley Spencer, and uh, I'm from Gear, Indiana, close to Chicago, Illinois, and I am a Gears of War professional player, and I've been playing this game since 2007. There you have. Now, uh, Blaze, outside of the gaming world, uh, what is it that you do? Outside of the game world, I am, uh, actually, I just graduated. graduated really? Uh, yeah, culinary arts student. So I just got my Congratulations. First, first, my first degree, I was working on my second one in hospitality. And other than that, I'm just doing that and, uh, trying to find a job. Trying to find a job and, you know, trying to find time for gaming. And that's pretty much it. So what is your favorite meal to cook? What is your expertise? My favorite meal to cook would probably be, be the first meal I made when I got home that I actually probably learned from school. Yeah, that I did learn from school was chicken alfredo. So chicken alfredo, making alfredo sauce from scratch and everything. And, you know, just that one, that's the one I didn't perfect at home because that's the one everybody loves to eat. You know what mine is? What is it? Eggs, scrambled, and toast because it's simple. And that's always the best. It is the best. Simple is always the best. It is always the best. Always. Hey, but that doesn't mean, like, McDonald's and all the other nah. fast food places are the shit, you know, because they're not. Yeah, they, they, it's not even, like, real meat, really. Uh, <laughs> so, outside of that, um, do, do you have hobbies? Do you work out or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I was working out very avidly for, like, a long time. I actually ain't worked out in, like, the last three months because, uh... Well, we know what happened three months ago. Well, yeah, that is true. That is true. Gears of War 3 was, was released. Came out three months ago. So... You know, I gotta, I gotta get back to my emotions, get back into my routine, and uh, hit all, hit all that up. Sure. Nice. So, uh, hey. Blaze, uh, how What's did up? you get into professional Gears of War, and, <clears throat> and when did it happen? And just, oh, you know, that whole cliche story. Ah, uh, professional Gears of War. When did mm -hmm. I get into it? Um, you know, I was playing Perfect Dark Zero for a very long time, and that was my game. I love Perfect Dark Zero. And if any of you Perfect Dark players out there, you guys probably know me. That game was that game was the shit. Other than that game, Gears of War came out. My friend from school told me get it. It was gonna be hot. He showed me like a an article of it in Game Informer, and next thing you know, I, I picked it up. I fell in love with it. All my boys picked it up, and sooner or later, you know, GBs was the hot thing back then. You know, it was all about online. Not too many people knew about, you know, these LAN events. So, you know, we got on GBs, played. Next thing you know, ML, that was when MLG had their little online tournaments going on. You know, so MLG had the only little online tournament website, the ghetto one. <laughs> so they had that going on. And um, we joined a bunch of those tournaments, played them, MLG announced it, and I was off to Meadowlands. It was, it was really that simple on it. Nice. Now, uh, what is your best placing in a Gears of War event? Best placing Gears of War event, MLG is seventh place, Anaheim 2009. Blaze, you're better than that, my friend. I, I think I think I am. You know, it's all about <laughs> yeah. it, it's all about you know that teaming. You know, find a team, stick with it, and keep it moving. That's what it's all about. Find a team, stick with it, keep it moving. You know, I, you know, throughout my whole career, I probably had the longest I've been with the same team is two events in a row. That's wow. it. I've been with the team for three events, four events, or an entire season. You know, people didn't have the right mindset. And, you know, some of my teams just kept breaking up. Yeah, gotcha. So that, that's, that's what I credit to me not placing what I should have. Now, uh, this, you know, this off season, well, this beginning of the new season of Gears of War, assuming MLG picks it up, of course, 
Um, yeah, you've already had multiple team changes. Uh, you, you're back on IBN now, or you owned IBN, so IBN is your... Like, what the hell is going on? Well, I'm back with uh, my teammates. You know, originally, I, I guess I kind of I I I got dropped, so to say. You know, and, um, you know, a lot of stuff. You, some of you guys, I probably already know the whole story, but I ain't going to get too much into it. You know, but I'm back with the original, my original two... Deadly and Evade, so I'm back with them. And actually, back from my original four, my team, I ended off Gears of War 2 with that I was supposed to come into this game with, Carlito. So, oh, um, you, you do have your set squad now. So I do have my set squad, so hopefully everything works out here. Because I honestly got you, if I love this squad, it's just about, you know, everybody making sure they put the time in, put the time in to practice and get better. Because I ain't here to waste my time, you know, and, and, and I'm always ready to practice when we got to practice. Just, you, you just need to get all four of your teammates on that same page. Now, when you're practicing uh, Gears of War, are you doing all three game types? Yeah, we're doing all three game types now. Good. You're doing you're doing the right thing. How do you like them? Uh, me personally, you know, I've always liked respawn game types, and you know, and, and Call of Duty, Halo, and other games. So you know, in Gears of War, it's a little bit different because we always been so execution based over the years. But once once you learn it, I actually like it. King of the Hill, uh, King of the Hill Dry Dock is actually my favorite game type. So it's mine you know, too. I'm starting to love it. It's mine too, by far. It's uh, it plays so well, you know. It's just like it's uh, the first one to die always spawns torque bow though. I, it kind of annoys me. I hate that. <laughs> but um, so uh, looking forward, we have hype two coming up, and mm-hmm. you will be competing at that. Uh, yeah. So hopefully, yeah, we'll, we'll be playing at hype two. We'll be playing at hype for station two. So that's going to be awesome. Now, uh, in between now and then, preparation-wise, uh, what, what is your practice regimen really look like? And, and that's my issue. I really don't know, to be honest. I really don't know. What the hell do you mean uh, you don't know? I, I, I don't know, you know. See, I got, I, got, I got two other teammates. There's three of us who will be on when, when we got to be on a practice. And I got one straggler who's kind of, you know, deciding, deciding um, the schedule for the rest of the team. So his, right now, his schedule is random. So when I get his schedule figured out, I can get everybody else's schedule figured out. And then, you know, I can have that set practice schedule. Gotcha. Now, uh, individually, when you're not searching for a job and doing whatever it is that you do that you refuse to tell me, uh, are, are you on, like, every day? Uh, I could be on every day. I could be on every day, and that's just dedication right there. Now, you, you stream, know, so too, as well? Yes, I do. I do stream. Now, what? It's Guy Blaze? Is Blaze? Oh, it's just so twitch.tv slash Blaze. He always Twitch. puts on a show. Blaze. Puts on a show with the sniper. Try to. Uh, don't yeah. don't be modest now. Don't be modest. I'm, I'm a very humble person. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> when are you coming out with another montage? That's what I want to know. You know what? And I was thinking about that when the next montage was coming out, and I was having I had clips. You know, I, I got a bunch of clips. You know, I say something. I wanted to come out with a team tage. That was the next one, the team tage. But, you know, me and almost my team issues, I haven't been able to do that. So that's been one of my main issues there. But as an individual montage, you know, probably it's going to come out after the team ties. So, you know, team ties is next. Hopefully I can have that out by high festation. But that also depends on how much I'm scrimming. Nice. Nice. Well, that's good to hear. Glad to see you're finally back on a team, Blaze. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's uh, you know, it's back at home, you know. And there's crazy shit going on in yeah. the Gears of War community. Crazy it shit! Is. I was expecting you to quit and fu- and, and like, oh, like, just, but like thing. the way things were going, like, with Nick Merckx is on NBN, Predator has left the Insanes. Like, what what did you think when you saw that on Twitter? Were you just like, what the like, shit? Wow. I was like, wow, but it's also gonna be a great team at the same time. You think you know? so? Yeah. I mean, I but know Gandhi, so. Gandhi, I like you know, my like I was told you before, my team schedule was like. Really crazy, you know, for certain reasons and everything like that. That's why I, was, I hit you up on Twitter asking what time you was going to end, though. But I'm about to, uh... Oh, right, you're going to go scram. What like, like, in two minutes, you're about to hear me making crazy retarded call-outs. All right, all right, all right. Uh, all right, we'll end it. We'll wrap this up then. All right, so, Blaze, shout-outs, sponsor plugs, your Twitch, your Twitter. Go for it. Uh, hit my Twitter up. Twitter.com slash Blaze by Nature. Twitch TV slash Blaze. Hit me up. I'm actually probably going to be scrimming in a second. Well, I'll be scrimming in this next hour or whatever. And also, you know, i link you up to my teammates there as well. Mad love. Appreciate you guys for uh, hanging out with me this short time. All right, awesome. Well, you take care, Blaze. You enjoy your scrim. Uh, you too, man. Yeah, take it easy.
Well, short and sweet, nothing wrong with that, you know, it's just a, it's, a, it's another day in the Skype call, you know? Um, so, coming up last is uh, definitely one of my more favorite uh, players in the Gears of War community. His name is uh, Rob uh, Ambrose, I do believe. Something something to that extent. He's not on yet, but uh, we he's running errands, so I'll just sit here and fill for a little bit. Uh, this is Hammer. Um, by the way, if you guys aren't following Tyler Hammer on Twitter, please do. He's the reason I have this stream. He's the reason uh, Halo Nation is coming together. He's just really just a down ass dude, and you definitely have to follow him. His uh, Twitter is MLG Hammer Time. He's a lot. He's a lot better of a dude than me, and he deserves the utmost respect because he, he does things free of charge. If, if you're streaming and you don't know like what you should do or how to get it set up, contact him because he can do it, and he's lickety split, man. He's just super super fast. Uh, you just have to give him control of your computer. Uh, with Team Viewer, and it's a little scary at first, but um, you know it's okay. And uh, that's Hammer saying that he screwed up. But um, so yeah, well, thank you guys for uh, hanging out and watching. We we kind of gotta just wait a, a little bit here as uh, Rob Immortal Spawn gets on, but it'll it'll be soon. See, this is him. He will be there. Uh, other than that, um, I will attempt to get my chat up because it, it never loads for me and I, if anyone else has this problem if you could tell me how to fix that that would be seriously fantastic because i've never actually gotten it to work once in my entire life and, and it always works this way and it just sucks uh, i can never interact with my chat because it never works uh, one day perhaps one day but until that day we are forced to sit here and not have any form of communication it's very saddening Quite, quite saddening. But with that said, um, so earlier today, if you're tuning in from the Halo community, I did a show. It was a completely spur of the moment show. Uh, it, it was basically I titled it the Great Debate, and now it's going to turn into a weekly show where we discuss uh, all things Halo, pretty much uh, settings, future of the game, what needs to be done. It, it, it got kind of controversial there in a bit. And, and I pretty much called out everyone and anyone who wasn't uh, helping out the community who needs to, uh, myself included. And, and you know, I, I think it, it stuck with a lot of people and hit home for some. And you know, if you if you're a first person shooter fan out there, you you know that Halo is a very very household name, and I, we have to keep that game around because it's just the foundation of where MLG was. And you know, it's just awesome to have it around. So, with that said. Uh, definitely check that out. That's called Behind the Crosshairs as well. And I am still waiting on Rob. So. Oh, yes, there he is. Awesome. Fantastic. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is Immortal Spawn. Hello, Rob. Scott, what's up, man? How you doing? Do you have a video? You do have a video. I do, yeah. I literally just turned on my computer. I oh, fantastic. Out here just in time, so I was looking for a parking parking spot for about ten minutes. <clears throat> mm. that, that's always fun when you're looking for this. Oh, oh Rob, there look at go. you. Nice hair. Yeah. Looks pretty. <laughs> Thanks, man. So how, how you been, doing? Rob? It's been freaking forever, man. Yeah, I mean, what? It's been like 24 hours since we last interacted in in the gaming world, something like that. Yeah, it feels like it. So, uh, so yeah. Rob, uh, basics. You know, where you're from? What do you do? All that stuff. You know, where do you yeah, work? Sure. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for uh, for inviting me on the show and hello to the stream. Uh, if I if I don't know you already, I hope I hope to get to know you. Um, I'm a former Gears of War uh, two pro and uh, been on the scene from Gears of War one. But uh, I grew up uh, <clears throat> in South New Jersey. Um, Sicklerville was the town, and uh, I now live in Philadelphia. Uh, I have my own place here uh, in Manionk, if anyone is familiar with the area. Uh, I'm 24 years old. Um, yeah, New Jersey represent. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, go ahead and shoot a specific question at me. So that covers the basics. All right, so you, you deal blackjack on Saturdays, mm -hmm. correct? Saturday and Sunday days, I deal blackjack. I'm a full-time web designer, uh, web developer. I went to uh, University of the Arts in Philadelphia. Um, <clears throat> I was really into illustration, like in in my 
high school years, but I wanted to get more into uh, the computer world, like, you know, just gaming all the time and, and just knowing where that, that's kind of where the future was headed. Um, my focus was web design in college, and I took some illustration courses as well. Did but, you finish in four years? Yeah. You, how? How? It's impossible. <laughs> I'm, I'm on, like, the four-year program to get out of my community college. It's, it's absurd. So I guess I barely finished by four, but no, I managed to do it. It was tough. Like, I'll, I'll say that um, during my college, like, it was really hard to, to take gaming as much as I wanted to. Like, I'm in a much better position now because uh, my schedule, like, I control a little bit more. But in college, um, like, Gears of War 1 dropped, and, like, I used to go pretty big in Halo before Gears hit the circuit. Um, I'm talking, like, Xbox, like, uh, what is it, Connect days? Like XB Xbox Connect, Connect. XBC. Yeah. So, like, in high school, I would have, like, huge LAN parties after school, like, 16 to 32 people just all crowded in my basement like I was that guy. <laughs> everybody would come over, and uh, we would just land it up all the time. And uh, But reading about Gears, like, before that was, you know, I just read about the game and some magazines, seeing videos, and, and I was just so excited for this game. So it dropped in 2006, and, um, like, I just fell in love with the game, started on game battles, and... Uh, first team I kind of developed was a doubles team with, with a, a kid that I used to partner with in Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow. <laughs> so that was like my doubles partner for Gears, and uh, Splinter Cell was probably like the most amazing multiplayer Xbox Live game I've ever played, and I really wish they would reboot that game. Like, that was the most innovative 2v2. Did you spend any time on that? No, I never never purchased it. I looked at it and I was like, uh, not for it's me. Like, uh, it's two versus two, but one team has a third person view camera and they are stealthy like you know you can think of it as like a gears cam and you're very stealthy and the other team is the mercenaries and it's a first person camera and the idea is the team of two that plays uh, <coughs> as the mercenaries have to kill the two spies and the you know the two spies have to either um, neutralize the mercenaries or like complete the objective but it was the most unique game and it had so much like Huh. Uh, strategy and it was just awesome. So anyway, that yeah. was like my favorite thing. I grinded that until I was like number one on the leaderboards, and that that was just the most <clears throat> fun thing to do. A couple other players that were up there when I was playing that game. This is like oh three oh four. Would be Killer Crank, who uh, is a Gears of War one uh, national champion and still on the scene. Um, Terry fifteen was another guy who's playing that game. Um, I don't know what he's doing now, but and there were some other guys that were up the. Yet. But anyway, so that's, that's really where um, I moved into Gears and started High Council, which was a doubles team. Um, we were, you know, we were just, Psychotic was my partner, and then me and Psychotic bumped into uh, the squeeze in a doubles match. So Caesar uh, CDN111, I'm sure everybody knows if, you're, if you follow Gears of War, or if you follow any sort of esports games, he's the tall Puerto Rican guy. Um, that's <laughs> the really goofball. Loud. Yeah. And, uh, but, <clears throat> yeah, so we bumped into a doubles match on him on the Game Battles ladder, and Psychotic knew him because they live like 10 minutes away. And he was playing with our man at the time in the doubles, and they just destroyed us. I remember Caesar had some crazy double, like, uh, snipe shot on Fuel Depot. So I hit him up after that, and I was like, yo, you know, we're looking to start a team. Um, and so the three of us were like, all right, let's do this. Like, we, get, we need to find a fourth. And I don't know how it came about, but we, we uh, found out that this guy, AOD, XAOD Nick or something, forget the hell with his tag, he was a Battlefield 3 player, or Battlefield whatever player, and uh, he was on this AOD team, and that team was like winning all the Battlefield tournaments at the time in 06, and um, I don't know who knew him, but we, we, we tried him out, and it was working out, and AOD Nick is formally, you know, formally known as, it's Insane Nick now. So the, the four of us uh, was the original team I had for Gears of War 1, and we threw a plus sign on the end of the doubles name, so that was High Council Plus. So that's how that story uh, came huh. about. Anybody from Gears of War 1 remembers uh, High Council, and uh, oh, that's shit. where I started in Gears. So Now, now you're sitting here, multiple years later, uh, in Gears of War 3, a game that is completely flawless uh, in the competitive scene. Guns work, shotgun works, boom shots go boom, just awesome shit all around. 
Um, how are you liking this game? How is your team make up and all that? And where do you see the potential? Yeah, this game is by far, you said it's got like the most consistent uh, gears. I don't know if you saw my cap. I did. Up I did. <laughs> uh, so it's amazing. I mean, my play style has changed dramatically for Gears of War 3 uh, than it did in Gears 2. Um, and that's basically because the game works. Like, <laughs> the game, Gears of War 2 was, uh, was very inconsistent. And one of the things, like, my team, uh, Raw Talent, uh, we, we had a different play style than a lot of teams in Gears of War 2. And some, some kind of gave us negativity for that. But that was really based around how inconsistent the game was and relying on shotguns and relying on stuff that just didn't work. So we played, uh, we played the game differently. We played it a little more methodical, a lot more slower, and we just didn't want to risk losing a round because the game sucked. So that's how we played that game. Gears 3, like, works so well. I find myself being a lot more aggressive now. I find myself, uh, you know, doing a lot more work. Um, than I had done in the previous game, and like I said, I mean, it's just because the game works, and I'm not, you know, I'm not so afraid to like be pushing certain situations where it's like, well, you know, I, I would definitely chunk that kid in it, and he just didn't die. It's really not the case anymore. You know, I can I can actually rely on the game working, so feels a lot better. Now, how's your team? How how, how are you liking the makeup and everything? Sure, yeah, I'll run down uh, the roster right now. Uh, one thing that I recommend and suggest is really playing with people that you know and that you have a lot of chemistry with and one of the things going into gears three was i wanted to have a team that was the same roster for the whole season no ifs ands or buts about it that's what i wanted and i made sure that's what my teammates wanted because gears is not like the type of game where <clears throat> you try to find like the all-star players and you just go in and start running stuff it's a game of like repetition and and uh really just hammering things down you know you lose a tournament, so what? You know, you can't win every tournament. You go back to the drawing board. Everybody on the team remembers what you did wrong. So it's really just about sticking to the same squad. I, I value that very much. But anyway, my squad is uh, NJ Cubano, who is Gabe. Uh, he lives in Jersey. I met him uh, in, uh, in Gears 1 when I, I took a little hiatus focused on school. Like I said, that's important, number one school. And then I came back and, and met him and... Uh, and in Gears 2, I started up with him. And Zero XL, uh, Dan, who also lives in Jersey, um, he's a veteran of Gears of War 1. And Gears 2, he was on Raw Talent uh, for about half the season as well. And um, the three of us, uh, during the beta, we knew the three of us were going to do it this year. Uh, you know, as a, as a three-man squad, we were looking for that fourth. We were trying out a few players, uh, thinking about some of our previous teammates, but... Um, after a lot of a lot of discussion, a lot of practice, uh, we settled down on Brian Carrills, uh, who is our youngest teammate. And uh, you know, one of the things that was kind of inhibiting us from making that decision was was his age. Uh, he didn't really, he wasn't able to go to all the events in um, in Gears 2. You know, but uh, he's old enough now where he's mature enough to do that. And I just saw so much potential in him. And uh, we had our first LAN tournament. Um, you know, together we all met up, and he just played great on LAN, and we were really happy with it. So, so he's a great player. Now his internet sucks. And our biggest uh, inhibition would be uh, Brian's connection. <laughs> our second biggest uh, fall, fall, um, our whatever, preventing us from practicing a lot would be <laughs> Gabe's, uh, Gabe's work schedule. And uh, those are the two things that kind of are holding us back right now, as far as playing uh, as much as we can. But when we do play, um, you know, we just we all realize like why this why this is right and why we're so confident together. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, Brian's connection. You know, I, I told him to come, move two hours and and live with me, man. Just come hang out. Well, you know, I'll, I'll take care of you. Isn't you know, he like sixteen? But he, no, he's eighteen. But he's in college and he lives in New York um, and he can't do all that. But I don't know what it is. It's like his neighborhood has a has some internet issues. So hmm. it's really strange. Fascinating. He's 18, yeah. Quite the problem. So now, uh, when that fails, like when his internet shits the bed, which it, it does. It happened last mm -hmm. night when I was trying to cast you guys. Uh, what what yeah. do you do from there? Do you scrap practice? Do you go to 3v3s? So, um, yeah, the frustration builds in. Um, so basically, like, we, we GB a lot. We play a lot of game battles. Um, and 
when he can't do that, we just don't play game battles. Like, because it's stupid. It's risking a loss, and he just... And losses on that take, like, three hours to get gain back, because by the time you lose so much X takes forever, it's really frustrating. Um, so we'll either, uh, you know, go over maps or something, or just play alpha. Like, you know, the four of us will just play alpha. We normally don't even, like, participate in other sort of scrims, or it's just, it's just not worth it. It's not good use of our time, but... Uh, he was feeling like it was okay for a little bit, so we gave the uh, the execution of the night a shot, and then it just went to shit. And it, well, you guys had the first sucked. the first map was good. It it was okay. He was still lagging. We somehow pulled out the seven rounds, but um, it it was just sucky. So yeah, it's it's unfortunate, and we're really hoping that something changes. Uh, you know, with that soon. That's really our biggest fault. Uh, letdown right now. It's something you can't control. You know, like yeah. it's his internet connection, and it's it's frustrating. Now, looking forward, will you be attending Hypefestation 2? Yes. Will you be we'll competing? Be a, That's yeah, the question. That question. We, are, we will be competing. Uh, we got the dates, and everybody took off of work as they're supposed to. So, I'm For sure this wait. time. I can't wait, dude. Because I, before I like, it was I like can, people took yeah. off, they didn't, you know. If, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if people haven't seen Raw Talent play on LAN and how loud we actually get. like Really? Gonna be an incredible. Dude. You get you get loud. You get hyped. You don't even know, man. You think I'm like this pretty monotone guy, which I am. But when it's years, <laughs> when it's years of war time, like seriously, the beast comes out. I'm I'm the loud. I am the loudest kid there. I promise you that. Really? I yeah. Never would have guessed. If anybody in the chats uh, goes to NJ Halos or anything, they'll they'll vouch for me. Huh? So you're the loud one. Do you talk shit too? <laughs> Oh my god, absolutely, Gandhi. It's like, it's one of those things that really? like, I look at as another level of the competitive game. Like, these are the type of things that you can't do online. You know, I can't go online and scream. Like, the only thing that would serve the purpose is my neighbors yelling at me. But when it's on land, like, it's about getting in your opponent's head. It's about keeping the momentum on your side of the table. It's about these lot more things that people don't think about. It's about throwing, like, random distractions at them, you know, voice distractions. You're screaming one thing, they're thinking it, you're doing another. So you have this element of sound that you can, you know, portray to the other team that, that, um, that just goes such a long way. So if you, if you don't have, uh, you know, if, if you can let yourself go and really just be as loud as you can and, and just stay hyped and just – the, the the small fact of being louder than the other team just gives you that advantage in itself because, you know, they feel belittled a little bit. So Absolutely. So, are you, so you're pumped to compete versus everyone oh because yeah. the Internet has just ruined you guys. I know, and it's, it sucks. It dampens our practice. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, we are able to get the monthly land in, which is convenient for us. That's another thing. Like, uh, we wanted to have a teammate that was local, and, and Kirill's is local. Like, we want we want to get that king of the couch tournament every month like we want the four teammates there that we're going to play with the whole season because that's land practice i don't want to i don't want to go fly to an event and meet this one kid i play with online you know once every few months and i want to be able to have that bond like consistently so you're more comfortable sitting next to each other and stuff so yeah that was one of the reasons why we picked up him as well gotcha all right man well uh thanks for coming on the show you got any shout outs and sponsor plugs, Twitches, Twitters. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you guys, uh, your King of the Couch tournaments go down uh, in Jersey every month, um, kotcnation.com. Um, check those out. Uh, raw talent's always in attendance there. Um, definitely shout out to my teammates and, and everybody that watches uh, my stream. And if you don't, um, I pretty much stream our, us practicing every night. Uh, that's twitch.tv slash immortal spawn. Um, our team website, you can watch all three of my teammates at the same time. Uh, I put this plug in together from the Twitch site. So that's rawtalentgaming.com. Um, and if you head over to the live streaming page, you can check out uh, our three streams. That's me, Kirills, and Q NJ Cubato, the three of us together. You can interact with all three chats and watch us all scrim at the same time. It's really cool. So we, we hang out there like uh, pretty much every week evening. And uh, thanks to all, you know, my viewers and anybody, you know, that supports esports in general. If you're not, you know, a Gears of War player, that's cool. I still love you. Uh, esports is the shit, and <laughs> let's let's stay on the uprise. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, man. Well, thank, thank you for you, tuning Gandhi. in.
for doing these type of shows, man. It's really good. Yeah, you you keep me posted as the one you scrim. I will cast as long as Curl's internet doesn't suck. Yeah, thank you very much. All Hopefully right, that's the case. Love Thanks, you, buddy. Bro. Take care. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a show. That is behind the crosshairs. So basically, um, uh, tweet me. Let me know. I'm at MLG underscore Gandhi. Let me know uh, who you want me to bring on. Uh, I can get. I have a pretty good pool. Uh, I can't really get a hold of any of the instant guys if you're a Halo fan. Uh, that doesn't really happen. Uh, but uh, I, if you want like Nick Marks on here or Prospect, any of the Gears guys, I can I could probably weasel most of the Gears guys. And uh, the majority of Halo minus uh, Instinct, I can totally get. So uh, you guys just let me know who you want, and I will do my best to deliver that. Other than that, um, it, when my chat loads and it actually works, uh, towards the end, I always do... Um, I always do a, uh, I pick like three random questions from the community, but uh, recently that just, it hasn't been happening because my, my damn chat doesn't load. Uh, but that's neither here and there. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. I'm uh, super grateful to have you all, and um, other than that, uh, stay tuned. Uh, this is going to be every Wednesday, so uh, every Wednesday at exactly 7 o'clock, uh, I do four people, and that's it, man. Thank you very much. Take it easy.